You're in it with Jamie, and this is the industry. Today's show is brought to you by Meant for Millions 28 Days to Melt Your Money Blocks Away. Now, it's been a little while since we've had an industry episode, so let me refresh your memory. This is my amazing interview series where I bring on the absolute best female entrepreneurs who I believe are really paving the way in business to doing things differently to all of the standard rules and blueprints that you have seen spruiked all over the internet. When I was coming up with guest ideas for this series, My guest today was literally one of the top of my list because honestly, and you'll hear it throughout this conversation, when it comes to the very controversial topic of AI and chat GPT, I really feel like Jess is truly paving the way with how best to use this software as a tool to work smarter, not harder in business. This conversation literally had my brain blowing from the get-go and I am so excited for you to dive in and to see truly how you can use the power of AI to support you and your business. Okay, Jess, tell us what is hot and what is not in the industry for you this week. Well, obviously I'm here to talk about AI. So AI is hot right now. <laughs> like, so fucking hot. I think <laughs> if you haven't heard about AI, ChatGPT, you've obviously been living under a rock if you're in the online entrepreneurial world. Um, it is super, super hot. And um, what's not, I guess, is not utilizing it to its full potential so that you are still stuck in hustle mode and, you know, just trying to brainstorm all of the content yourself, writing all of the content yourself. If you were back in those days still, like not hot at all, other end of the spectrum. Jess, welcome to the On Air with Jamie podcast. I am so fucking excited to have you. We have finally made this show happen. Like when, how long have we been talking about having a podcast episode together? Oh my goodness. Probably like six months. It's been a long time. Literally. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're here. We've done it. We've made it. But do you know what? I'm actually really glad that it's played out how it has because Mm. you have like stepped into this whole new world of business since Mm -hmm. like when we first met and started talking to now. And like, I'm so excited to unpack this with you. So we are Mm. here to talk everything AI, chat GPT, because from what I can see on your Instagram, it's like literally changing your life and I need to know everything about it. Yeah. I guess when we kind of first started chatting, we were in a membership together from what, March last year, I guess, or over a year. Something like that. Yes. Yeah. And I was smack bang right at the start of starting my business. So I kind of joined that membership, um, because the coach was really cool and I was like, I need to soak up all of the information that I can to get the ball rolling as fast as possible because I was a mum at the time. I had eight-month-old Gracie um, and Ella was, oh my goodness, like three and no, four. She turned four. And um, I just didn't have very little, little time to kind of do all of the things to start the business, to grow the business. And I really wanted to get to the point at the end of the year where my maternity leave ran out that I could be going full time or, you know, have it as a bit of a side hustle so that it could help pay all the family bills and all of that stuff. But it was fucking hard. It was really hard. Like, Let's be I real. didn't. <laughs> Let's be real. I didn't think it was going to be that hard. I have, you know, a really strong marketing background, um, community engagement comms. I've been doing that for 12 years. I've been in and out of the entrepreneurial world. I've started businesses. I've sold businesses. I've done all of the stuff. I was like, I can use all of this and package it up into something really cool that I can help people with. But having the girls at home and then having, you know, all of the ideas in my head, I was just just completely torn all of the time. And, you know, we went through winter and all of the sicknesses that we've just been talking about now. And I was just like, how this just is really impossible. And it got to pretty much November. And I was like, I think it's time to kind of either call it. I need to be able to choose next year if I'm going to go back into the workplace, into the workforce, like into a nine to five or, um, 
something really needs to change drastically. Like I'm going to have to put money into this so that I can get help. Like I can get marketing people. I can get VAs to kind of help me because I can't do this by myself. That was where I was at. And then yes. catch APT, 30th of November. really quickly there? Yeah, go for it. Go. I feel like this is just the part of entrepreneurship that is not spoken about. Yeah. Because, and I've been talking about this a lot, uh, specifically on the podcast, but also on Instagram about the mental load. This is like my yeah. new thing that I've like oh. jumped on the train of because yeah. I just think that it's so still not spoken about. And I mm-hmm. talk about it obviously as like from a, a a woman's perspective and how much we actually carry as women. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I recorded a podcast a few weeks ago that was like, I, you know, we can educate our men, we can educate our husbands, our partners so much around this. And I'm finding like mine is so receptive, but there's an actual easier way. And that is exactly what you said. It's to have Mm -hmm. help. It's to earn Mm -hmm. more money, to be Mm -hmm. like, I can't fucking do this on my own. Whoever came up with the phrase solopreneur, is an idiot because you can't do it all yourself. You have to outsource. You need help. Mm -hmm. You need that support, whether that be in your home or, you know, in your business. So I want to say like, thank you for being so raw and so vulnerable because I just don't see people talking about how actual hard it is when you're trying to juggle all of the things. Yeah, And for some reason, I feel like we feel we don't feel like we can ask for help and we don't mm-hmm. feel like we can be supported in our home or in our business. And that's totally. how we need to move forward. Yeah. And I was like, I felt like a fraud. My entire business was built on the fact that I was meant to be helping women who were in the exact same situation as me move from a one-to-one work kind of having clients all the time and all of calls and all of those things to moving more into an online space. And I couldn't do it myself. So I was like, how the hell am I meant to be teaching these women how to do this? And I can't do it myself. And I felt I was rocking up on Instagram and I'm showing my face. And I was just like, this is so fake. This is so fake. Like it's not working that it's way too hard. If I'm not, if I'm not earning enough money in order to get that help. And the other thing, I know you're super into human design like myself. So I'm a manifester. So I'm literally here to inform. So the mental load from that perspective as well was just, was just a lot. So my household is, I'm informing all, all day, like 24 seven. I am here. (laughs) Yeah. So when you talk about the mental load, like just next level. And that's the other thing as well as around showing up in your marketing, like I'm here to inform again. So, but what I was saying just, there just wasn't this marriage. It just was not working. So yeah, it just kind of got to the point, pointy end of the year. I had to make that decision. And then this kind of landed on my lap, chat GPT launched. Tell me how you um, discovered it. Because I know like, yeah. you know, it kind of, for me, and this is probably, this could just be me, but for me, yeah. it kind of just popped up out of nowhere. And yeah, I didn't much. fully understand how it could be utilized truthfully mm. until I saw you talking about it. Yeah. So, um, I, I think it was via an email. It was a tweet. I have worked at an innovation consultancy, um, for two years. I was the head of marketing, digital marketing there. And so I've always kind of kept tabs in tech startups, that kind of stuff. And I've just got, I've just subscribed to so many mailing lists. So my inbox is always full just with new stuff coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Completely overloaded. Um, And I think the subject line was like game changer in the business world, AI. So media, I had already started playing around with, there was copy AI and there was Jasper, um, which are actually built. They use the API of the ChatGPT platform. So they were already kind of, you know, paying OpenAI, who is the developer of ChatGPT. They were already paying OpenAI to use that platform. So we already had some semblance of what ChatGPT was, but it was like, it's honestly, it's like a hundred dollars a month. I think they were charging to use it. So you'd get a free kind of go. Um, But I wasn't really, I wasn't using it. I'll be honest. Like I wasn't using it. I was kind of like playing with it. It wasn't um, at the stand of what chat is at all, but I got this email. It said something about AI. My ears just pricked up and I read through it, jumped on the website, got in the wait list to start with ChatGPT, and away we kind of went. I just spent 
So that was like November 30th, um, all of December, all of January. I was on family holiday. We went to beautiful sunny Queensland where you are. And um, I just like, yeah, I was just downloading the whole time and testing and trialing while we're on holidays. I was just, yeah, I was just soaking everything up because it was just the results that I was getting. I was like, I cannot wait to share this. This is just going to change everything. And um, I guess that's when I started kind of posting at the end of January about what my findings were. And initially I was kind of like, and I was so funny because I was working with a branding um, consultant at the end of the year, because that's how lost I was. I was paying so much money to coaches because I was like, find, find what I need to be doing right now, because I don't know, I am so lost. And I was paying so much money and I got a message from her and she said, just be careful. You don't want to be pigeoning, your, pigeoning yourself as, you know, the AI expert or an AI specialist. And I read that and I was like, no, actually I do. Like, I think I do. And that was the point where I read that message and I was like, and I got triggered because I read it and it made me angry. And I was like, if that's making me angry, I need to read more into that. And I was like, no, I do. Like, I really, really do. Because if this is changing my life, I need to be talking about it. And if that's going to pigeonhole me, don't care. Like, I love it. I need to be talking about it. There's nothing else like this that is going to change the lives of women, online entrepreneurs that are just so used to hustling to get to their end goal. Um, This is it. Like this is the future and the more people that I can tell, tell like to use it and how to use it and how to master it and, you know, stop this overwhelm of, oh my goodness, where do I even go from here? And what am I even doing? And how do I do this and balance motherhood and cooking dinner and all the stuff? This is just, it's just, yeah, it's it. (laughs) It's it. I'm so excited. (laughs) I love your prompts and things, and we won't talk about that on here just because you have so much yeah. great content over on your Instagram. And so yeah. anyone who's listening who wants to like really dive into how Jess uses chat GPT, her Instagram yeah. is where she literally gives you prompts, literally mm-hmm. everything you could ever want to know. Yeah. And it's what's <laughs> expanded like my eyes of AI, because I remember listening to a reel that you said, and you were like, the biggest thing that I did in the beginning with chat GBT was actually thinking too small. And I was like, oh yeah. my God, that's me. I'm here, like just mm-hmm. asking it silly little questions totally. and using like actual prompts that I've taken from your Instagram, because it's honestly yeah. so helpful. It has like, I'm still working on how to use it in its full capability, but yeah. it really has changed the usability of it. Like I think so many of us are like, oh, we can just ask it questions and it can answer kind of like, you know, a fast Google, but it's so much more than that. Can you tell us about some of the things that you've actually created with chat GPT? Cause I know that you're like, you're on fire at the moment, creating things left, right and center. Yeah. So, um, from the beginning I was like, okay, I need to start out a whole new funnel. I need to have all of my new new digital products. I need to kind of not scrap what I did last year, but I was like, I need to, you know, be teaching women how to be using this new program, this new software. So, um, lead magnet was the first thing that I did. And it was so funny. I created this lead magnet. I made it all beautiful. And I went onto a Facebook group told people that I had this chat GPT, um, workbook slash guide and my phone went mental in 30 minutes. I had 300 downloads and I was like, wow, I think I'm on to, I think I'm onto something. Like I think I'm onto yeah. something. And I was really careful. All of the messaging that I used in that Facebook post, I created with chat GPT. Um, mm-hmm. so like I had to do a whole rebrand. I had to co- talk about all of my new key messaging, how I was going to talk about myself and how I was going to talk about this software. Um, this tool. Um, so all of that, the lead magnet, and then I went straight into a um, a workshop. So I created AI content magic. Um, and that was like an hour and a half of me just basically talking about ChatGPT. So all of that, the workshop, so the scripts for the workshop, the outline for the workshop, then I launched um, the hookup, which I know you've purchased. Got, and that was yep. all about <laughs> yeah, creating hooks, using hooks. All of that was with ChatGPT. So literally like everything that I create at the moment, 
just, we've been so sick, like the whole family's been down for a couple of weeks. And I said, I was pretty real and honest a couple of days ago on Instagram, over two weeks, I earned $62. And I was like, this is, this is part of the problem with Instagram is that you need to be continuously posting or running ads in order to be making money consistently. So at the moment I am building out an entire new kind of email marketing funnel. So I wrote 16 emails in two hours the other day and not to mention the entire strategy of using, you know, what needs to be said in each of those emails and making sure it promotes certain products and how it's going up to upsell to all of that um, and then flesh them all out. So in two hours, like just done to the point where now I have a marketing person that I am in love with. She's my marketing unicorn. I can give her all of my content and now she's going to upload it into my email marketing platform. And I have a whole new funnel that I can exist without Instagram, basically, you know, it's, oh, um, I love this just done. Like just it's once yeah. you get to the point, I think where you really understand your business and you can feed it the right kind of information that it needs in order to create what you need. And sometimes you don't know what you need. That's that's the other issue that I think, and that's where you start need to start needing to think a bit bigger in that you can use it to strategize. You can use it to plan. You can use it to outline your next moves and your roadmaps. So when I talk about emails, you know, it's not just writing an email, it's, it's writing an email marketing strategy that tells me that, you know, I'm going to send 16 emails and what they need to say and to make money. Cause that's, we're not, we're not here to have a hobby. We're not here to kind of, you know, lovely, it's lovely making friends and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, we're here to make money. So that's, here to make business, that's the like, end goal. And yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. I love and that's that. what it's there for. Like it's, yeah. I feel like the most ironic thing for me about this is that you're using chat GPT to mm. teach how to use chat GPT. Like yeah. it blows my brain. What I want to know is, yeah. so I, in my experience playing with it, and again, this could just be my experience playing with it, yeah. is that I find it super helpful for the very like tangible strategic stuff. But for mm -hmm. me and the work that I do, which is very mindset based, very yeah. almost like it's a bit woo woo, right? You know, I'm reprogramming yeah. your mind. <laughs> I'm connecting with your energy. It's very different yeah. to teaching strategy. And so mm -hmm. far, I'm not finding it overly helpful for mm -hmm. that side of things. Do you think that's a gap in the software or a gap in the way that, you know, we as business owners are using the software? If you are using it and you're not getting the correct information that you're desiring, you're right. There is going to be either two things going on there. So the first thing I would be doing is feeding it as much information as possible. Staying in that one chat, I would be feeding it as much information as possible about your niche, about your topic, about your business. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is that they skip yeah. that step. They kind of just go, I'm a business and marketing mentor, write me three posts Whereas it needs yeah. a lot more information in order to create, inf like to create content that is specific to your niche. So what I would say to you is that anything long form that you have, and I did this yesterday before I started writing all of my emails, anything long form that you have, just literally say, I'm going to paste in a whole heap of content here. Um, you don't need to do anything with it. All you need to say is next. When I'm finished, pa when I'm finished pasting in my copy, um, I will give you ne my next instructions. But what I need you to do is analyze this content to understand my business and to understand the context of what I need to be creating. And then you literally can just, I just copied and pasted all of my Instagram captions and I just said, and it just kept saying next, 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 next. And then I got to the point where it could write these emails for me. It knew about my products. It knew about my services. It knew my brand voice. It knew the way that I needed to be coming across in my emails. And that's why they were pretty much perfection. I will still go through them and bring in my story and bring in a bit more of my personality. But I think that's the main thing that people are missing when they're using this tool is that, um, yeah, they, they think, well, everyone's talking about ChatGPT. It's meant to be amazing. Like I just need to give it this kind of information, just an instruction, a prompt, and then it's going to be magic. And it's not.
And then they're like, oh, this is rubbish. Like I'm not using this again. But as you said, if you are in a super, super niche kind of um, business that I guess isn't a mainstream kind of thing, um, then what I would be doing is I'd be feeding it a lot more information. I'd be finding books. It now has access to the internet. So I would be giving it websites to analyze. I would be giving it books to say, summarize this at the start of the chat and say, okay, this is, this is part of my business. This is what I teach. Lots of different things. You need to give it as much information that you possibly can and think outside the box. So yeah, as I said, books, websites, it's connected to the internet now. It's got access to everything. So um, that's, that's kind of where you need to start in order to start getting that magic to get that content that you really need. My brain is actually blowing. (laughs) I'm like, holy fuck. That is so much stuff that I just had not thought of, like at all, at all. And, Mm. and I think like, it's like you're training it, right? Totally. We we do think it's magic. We think it's magic Mm -hmm. software that can just tell us things, but really what it is, is something that we're training and programming so that it can then give back. So it's actually a relationship completely and that's why it's called chat gpt what's a chat a chat is a conversation so we need to be talking to it i when i have clients when i have one-to-ones the first thing that we do is a whole mindset thing around how we need to be having conversations with chat exactly what i've just said in that if you're sitting down and you're having a conversation with me what's the context that you need to provide me about your business in order for me to be able to give you advice or recommendations is the exact same thing with chat if you haven't given it what it needs to know context it will not create any you know information that is valid for you it might go tip of the iceberg you might get some kind of like really surface level stuff that's pretty good you know sounds like you is okay but if you want to go deep if you want to write 16 emails you know in two hours and have them at like 90 percent, then you need to be feeding it a lot of information to kind of get to that point yes oh that's wild I have a bit of a loaded question for you. I know there's a lot of like fear around Mm. using AI and I've seen a lot of very heated discussions in entrepreneurial Mm -hmm. Facebook groups. Do you think that, that this, like we know how powerful it is, but you're writing like lead magnets, email marketing, creating courses, Mm -hmm. the ability of it is so far, like so wide, I should say. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is potential for people to create businesses that they actually, let's just say it, have no business creating. Like they're not actually skilled in that area. Yeah. 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 I do. And that's where I think video content is going to have a big play um, in moving forward because people are going to be reading content now and going, this is either just generic. It's disingenuous it's not authentic and you're going to be able to feel that I feel like if the person isn't going to be weaving through their brand story that's going to become a really big piece moving forward if you don't have a story and if you're not telling your story enough as to why you're here today and why you're at the point that you can help people if you're not telling that you're going to get left behind and if you're not using AI to its full potential in order to tell your brand story you're also going to get left behind but I think 100% I think there will definitely be I've already seen it there's people that are putting out you know businesses you with AI where it's like a thousand ten thousand prompts you know here you go and it's like they've just gone on to chat GPT and said give give me your most te- your 10, 10, 10 best prompts, prompts for mark yeah totally <laughs> because they've left yeah. when you see prompts that have still got the quotation marks they've literally been copied and pasted I bought a prompt thing to ch- to see what 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 was like what it was i spent 60 mm-hmm. bucks and they were literally copied and pasted and he would be making an absolute or whoever it is it would be making an absolute killing because they're on facebook ads like all the time but 100 percent, there's going to be people popping up in different different niches that will be you know, I am all for learning. I am all for reskilling and upskilling, I should say. Um, and you know, making the most of where you are, but I guess, yeah, AI does is is problematic in that kind of Mm. 
you know, and I know you've been talking about fake it until you make it kind of thing. Um, yeah. So I think there are people that are going to go like, oh, I'm just going to use ChatGPT and I fake it totally till I make fake it. it. Like, yeah. yeah. Totally fake it. So what I'm hearing is that like this absolutely can transform a business and build a business essentially from the ground up. You have proven that to us, but it is still our, like as entrepreneurs, we have to give the human element to our social media, to everything that we do. You have to connect. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you're in, if you're in a personal brand model, business model as well, you have to connect. I don't, I've heard so many marketing people now saying it is just so important to be showing your face and, you know, you can't, you can't hide behind the camera anymore. You can't just, you know, maybe a couple of times a week if you want to put out reels where they're just kind of shots of your computer and stuff. But at the end of the day, people want to connect. And when I get DMs, majority of them have started off from a post or from a story where I'm talking about my life or something that's happened and then they have connected to that and that's where when you've got that nurture when you're building that relationship that's where it's just like people jump into my dms if I'm saying hey I'm I'm launching this new product and people will literally say to me just sign me up for everything just put me on the list for everything whatever you're selling that's what I want and that's yeah. that's the kind of relationship that you want. Yeah. And you're not gonna you're not gonna get that if you're just spruiking content Hide that's from ChatGPT and yeah. you know, and there's nothing to it. That's yeah. yeah. So it's really it's a tool to support and grow your business. 100%, it's not to yeah. take over everything that you do. And I feel like ever no. since you know the pandemic and all the things that we've been through over mm-hmm. the last few years, people are now more than ever craving that human connection. And I think mm-hmm. that this is the piece that most people that I see that are really scared of AI, this is mm-hmm. what they're scared of. They're like it can take over the whole world and then all of a sudden we've lost that connection piece with yeah. everything that we do and we're allowing people who like I said have no business being in the businesses that they're in you know Mm -hmm. have a voice and have a platform but I feel like this is the key right it's the connection piece it's bringing the human back into the business yeah and I had a comment on my reel a couple of days ago and it was a a mum in business and she said um I'm I this is the reason why I'm boycotting AI um because anybody that's using it um you know I want I want to be seen as authentic basically like I don't believe AI is authentic and I want to be seen as authentic so I'm not going to use it anymore um and she was like you do you though and I was like oh <laughs> like passive aggressive so comment passive okay. aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I was like you're, you're literally on my page all I talk about is chat GPT but I'll do me yeah. that's okay but um yeah 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 we love it but um yeah. And I was just like, oh, like, okay. So definitely there are people out there that think that ChatGPT cannot create authentic content. And I think that's where hundred percent, everything that we've been talking about, brand stories are so important and you can train ChatGPT to know your brand story. Like mm. that's, and then to incorporate know, it. That's right. So it comes down to it. you again, feeding 100%. it your voice. It's it almost is almost like you're creating a second you. Yeah, it's a copywriter. That's how I think about it. I think it's it's a copywriter. Yeah. It's it's not going to, you know, and I think this is where I've had conversations with copywriters and they're like, oh, I don't know, you can't really say it's a copywriter, but at the end of the day it is. But um, you, you need to be able to once again feed it the information about your business and you need to be at the point where you can be thinking strategically about your business. But if you're not, then you can also use it to do that, that piece of, you know, strategy as well, right at the beginning. So, and that's exactly what I had to do. I was working from basically ground zero in January to kind of restart my business. So a hundred percent, you need to always bring in that human element into your content. Um, yeah, because we can see, we can see already now what, what content looks like when it's not. Yeah, when it's not. Let's talk about that authenticity piece a little bit before we finish mm-hmm. off, because that's an argument that I see all the time is people that are like, mm-hmm. I just don't understand how it's authentic or yeah. congruent in alignment, mm-hmm. all the words mm-hmm. to use AI to generate copy for your business. And I'd just love to hear your opinion on that. 
Um, yeah. Truthfully, I don't have one because I think that with everything that you've shared today, uh, you know, it, it is authentic because you're training it to speak like you. It's totally. literally like you've said, just a tool. But I'd love to hear like your take on that because again, that's the argument that I see all the time is like, this isn't authentic. And I've had friends also mm. use AI and speak about it and then be called out and basically like, oh, so what you're saying is you're just using AI to create all your content. You don't actually know what you're talking about. So, yeah, I think at the end of the day, you're you. And my entire business model is about change, is about changing that perception, I guess, but also training people and motivating people and showing people how you can use this tool to sound just like you. So if it sounds like you, it's authentic. I, that's that's where my kind of stance is. If if what it's saying and you're editing it and you're going through it and you're saying, yes, this sounds just like me. That's exactly what would come out of my mouth. You fed it all of the copy at the beginning. You've given it the context about your business. What's the difference between you doing that and giving that you know, a brief to a copywriter and then them writing a whole website for you? What's kind of the difference there? Yes, I know one's, one person's so human and one per, one's like, one's a tool, one's a computer. But at the end of the day, how ChatGPT works is by giving you the next best word. That's all it does. So it goes word to word to word. So if you have given it enough context, all it's going to do is scroll through all of its data and it's going to just find the next best word in alignment with the pattern and the context of the information that you have fed it. So in doing that, I believe it's totally authentic because it's going to find the next best word that you would say if you have trained it correctly. So, and if it doesn't, that's where you say expand, ch change this, regenerate, you know, and yes, there are hundred percent going to be people that don't have that skill set, but I think also copywriting and editing in general is something that I think as an online business owner, everybody needs to have that skill set. You just do. So, Absolutely. yeah. So I think in using ChatGPT, everyone is going to start getting better at that themselves. They're all going to be editing, you know, profuse amount, a lot of information. And um, that's something that we all definitely all need to get better at. But in terms of authenticity, I think if you have trained it correctly to sound like you, then 100% it's authentic. I think, yeah, thinking otherwise, it's... Yeah, those people, I think, are going to be completely gobsmacked at what's going to be coming over the next kind of couple of years. And we are at the point now, I think, where it's back in 1992, where the internet started and people were like, what's this internet thing? You know, like, no, nah, I don't know. Don't know. I'm not going to use it. And now look at us now. Like, we are with these 24-7 yeah. connected to the internet. And if we lose these, what do we do? Like, lose our minds. If, literally and everything literally. like everything our everything. whole life right totally we have grandparents like my grandparents are all on the internet <laughs> like they're yeah. in their 70s yeah. and have facebook and i think Everybody. it is definitely the way of the future and i feel like this is grow. very yeah. much work smarter not harder totally totally it's just and as we said it is a tool to do that and if you know, you're feeling like you don't have enough time in the day. There's just not enough hours to get what you want done. Last year, I was like, oh, I've got, you know, I need to create a lead magnet. I want to create an online course, but I need to keep posting and showing up on Instagram. There's just so many things, money management, your finances, all of the things as an online business owner that you need to be doing, relationship management, all of that stuff. It's just a lot. So if you can even just go, okay, well, I'm only going to use it for my Instagram content, or I'm only going to use it for my emails just to get started and see what you can do. It's just going to completely just gobsmack you and change the way that you think about AI and, and about how you can run your business so much more efficiently and save so much time. Cause that's what it's all about. Just saving time, just save time. <laughs> like that's, the more time that we can save, the more time we can actually be focusing on other things and, yeah. you know, being present 
being, you know, mum, going to the park, doing whatever you want, having that 10 Living your life, Just right? chill. Totally, yeah. totally. And that's what it's done for me, 100%. Yeah. I feel like it's not even just the time piece either. It's the actual energy and output. So to bring it back to human design, I'm a projector. Yeah. I don't have energy yeah. to be like yeah. constantly on the go and juggling all the things and yeah. trying to create this and create that. So I feel mm-hmm. like for for anyone who carries a, a heavy mental load, for mums mm-hmm. who are time poor, for all of my fellow beautiful projectors out there, I feel mm-hmm. like this is like the key to saving our energy to put it into 100%. things that actually matter the most to us, to put it into totally. our clients so we mm-hmm. can show up with our clients and hold their energy as well as ours. Mm-hmm. Completely as well. Like I'm a manifester. So literally my entire day is just ideas. I come up with ideas all of the time and I have to choose between what I talk about and what I don't. And um, I'm not very good at the doing piece. So this is where I like have and I still fall down into little kind of periods where I'm just like I have to do 16 emails and I'll go not and today like, not today <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally but then I open the laptop and it's like oh I remember like literally all I have to do is I've got my you know brand prompt and like I pop, I pop that in first and then I literally push enter or I just, t- and I just type, you know, two sentences and push enter and then just watch all of that content come out. That's all you have to do. And I forget sometimes cause I go, there's, cause I fall back into that trap of there's just so much mm. to do, so much to do. I've got emails, I've got sales pages, I've got thank you pages, I've got Instagram content, I've got workshops, I've got all this stuff like, you know, and you just go, where do I even start? wherever you want, open your laptop. whatever, and <laughs> totally open your laptop, whatever with you're your feeling brand that prompt, day. Which totally. brand prompt mm. is your yes. latest offer drop? Yes. Tell us so about new, that. Yeah. So new digital product, um, brand prompt. It's basically that entire prompt con- of context that we've been talking about. So what you do in your business, who you help, your solutions, price points, how they, you know, how they, you know, change people's lives, all of that inside one really big prompt that you feed into chat every time you start a new chat so that you are basically giving it everything that it needs in order to create this magic content. So, um, lots of tips and tricks. There's prompts included. I've also got a bonus in there. It's called story brand. So, um, sorry, story prompt, not story brands book story prompt is, um, the bonus and what that will actually do is allow you to create your brand story as well. So not only have you got all of the information about your business, but we need to make sure that we're interweaving your story throughout our, our, um, our, content, our content as well, because that's, yeah. that's how it makes it, makes it about you. So yeah, I'm super excited. So I'm hopefully launching that next week if everything goes well. And I'm like literally probably... running to your Instagram after this. To yeah. Really jump on that. <laughs> Because that's that's obvious. That's, that's what has changed for me. One thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. And for so many people, that's what. As soon as I kind of got to the point where that's the the information that I was providing at right at the start, and I've got it in like my Notion, where literally I just copy and paste it straight into chat copy every time I start a new chat, and it's all there, like everything there. And then it, you've trained it, and it just gets better and better and better and better. As you know, if you stay within that one chat, it's just. Yeah, it's honestly magic. It's so exciting when you like you. Lo- it's laughing out loud stuff. But some of the stuff you come up that yeah. comes up with, you just sit there and go, "Oh my god, how is this even happening?" So yeah, I'm so excited for it. This has got me so out. excited and so fired yeah. up. Jess, thank you <laughs> so much for this conversation. Before we jump so off, welcome. I would love you to yeah. just let anyone listening in know what else you have coming up in your world right yeah. now, and of course where they can find you and connect. And I will make sure that all of the details are linked below as well. Yeah, amazing. So I'm on Instagram at the Jess Clark, and you can find me on my website as well, which is just jessclark.com.au. Um, products at the moment. So Brand Prompt is coming out. I've got the hookup. So that's, you know, Jamie loves that one. That's all um, about making sure that we're captivating and converting our audience. Like we, the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you're doing a talking reel or a carousel, we need to be hooking our audience in. So that includes 365 hooks. So literally one for every single day of the year. Um, um, and then tutorials around how to kind of flesh out all of your Instagram content using ChatGPT. I do have a very exciting membership coming up as well called AIBFF. And that is basically like 
the be all and end all kind of thing for female online entrepreneurs that really want to grow their business using ChatGPT just like I have. So that's super exciting and hopefully coming up maybe next month or the month after, depending on how we go. Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space. Super exciting. I love that. I want to say with the hookup too, like what I yeah. noticed for myself, you know, we feel like we have to do all of the things. And obviously this whole conversation mm-hmm. has been very much about working smarter, not harder. I'm yeah. not a marketer. I'm not a copywriter. My mm-hmm. genius is in mindset and in reprogramming and in seeing things that like you as a client don't see. And yeah. and what the hookup and what I've learned from you about AI has enabled me to do is literally stay in my zone of genius yeah. which is where I excel. And basically it's like outsourcing the other stuff that my brain's not here for. Totally. And I think that we yeah. all need to really accept that. Like we're here for, we're here for a specific thing. We're here to stay in our zone of genius. And I just feel like this is the most beautiful, simple tool to enable us to do that. And it's free. Totally. Like it's fucking free. <laughs> totally. And that's where I just, I sometimes can't understand why people go, no, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use it. But I'm, I want to use, like, I need to outsource this. It's like, well, just give it a go. Like, just give it yep. a go. And I think um, people, like, they just, it gets lost in terms of, you know, how to navigate it and what to do first and everything. So that's where definitely I try and utilize Instagram and helping people so much, you know, giving them those prompts to kind of just give a little bit of a taster just to get going. Yep. Have a play. So, <laughs> have a play. That's my, my biggest advice is just talk to it. Like you would be talking to me, provide the context that you'd be talking to me. What, what would you need to tell me in order to kind of get whatever your goal is done? You know, so that's as easy it is as it is. I think like just have that conversation, pretend it's a person on the other end of the line. That's, that's kind of what I tell my clients and, and then see what happens, see what you get. So magic. Jess, thank you so much for your time today. For anyone listening that is inspired and wants to jump on the chat GPT bandwagon, make sure you go and check out everything that Jess has. Honestly, I've learned so much just from her free content. Um, It is honestly amazing. So Jess, thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you for having me.